Now we're going to do the motor portion of the neurological examination. We're going to break it down into upper extremity and lower extremity portions of the exam. So we'll start simply with observation. And in observation, we're going to look for areas of asymmetry, differences in muscle bulk, any obvious muscle atrophy, or any involuntary movements that you might happen to see. Seeing none, we'll move on to tone. So we'll assess his tone. And we'll do this by having you really relax your arm, have it be really loose, and then I'm going to wiggle his elbow, flex and extend his elbow. And what I'm feeling for is a really loose, floppy, spaghetti-like arm, which would tell me that his tone would be decreased, what I would characterize as normal, or then maybe some kind of an increased stiffness or ratcheting type of a feeling as I was moving his arm to suggest his tone would be increased. And his tone feels pretty normal. And we'll repeat that on the other side as well. And now we're going to start with the upper extremity motor exam. So we'll start by testing shoulder abduction. Shoulder abduction is a C5, an axillary innervated muscle. So I'll have you hold your elbows up in the air and don't let me push down. And you need to exert quite a bit of force to try and tease out if there's any subtle weakness. You can relax down. The next one we'll test is elbow flexion. Elbow flexion is C5-6 and musculocutaneous innervated. What I'm going to have you do is trying to pull my hand up towards your chin as I try to pull down against you. Go ahead. Good. And then we'll check on the other side. Pull up again. Good. And relax. The next muscle we'll check, or the next movement, is elbow extension. So we'll start in this one by basically having his arm pretty much extended. And I'll try to flex your arm against your resistance. Go ahead. Good. And we'll check on the other side. Good. And elbow extension is a C7, C8, and radial innervated movement. Okay, next we'll check for finger abduction. So what I'm going to have you do for this one is spread your fingers wide apart. And what I'm going to do is try to squeeze them together. So this is an ulnar nerve and C8, T1 innervated function. Hold them apart and don't let me squeeze. Good. And they were nice and strong and symmetric. Finally, the last one we'll check is for thumb flexion and opposition. So what I'll have you do in this test is actually bring your thumb over towards your little finger and hold it there and don't let me pull it apart. Good. And we'll have you do it on the other side. Good, and again, he's nice and strong and symmetric. Thumb flexion and opposition is C8T1 again, and mostly a median innervated function. Now we're going to do pronator drift. So what I'm going to have you do is hold your hands out in front of you like you're holding up a pizza, and then close your eyes. A normal response would be nice, steady, parallel hands. An abnormal response would be if one hand started to drift over in a pronated direction. He has a nice, steady hand position without any drift, so that's normal. You can relax now and open your eyes. Uh, now we'll move on to the examination of the lower extremities. We're going to start again with observational things and looking for atrophy, muscle uh, bulk changes, or any involuntary movements. Then we'll move on to the assessment of tone. For tone, I'm just going to use one hand to kind of support underneath his thigh. You can grab onto the foot if you like with the other, and we're just going to Again, slide his foot up and down, feeling for loose and floppiness or spasticity or just a good normal tone, which he appears to have. And this portion of the exam we'll do on both sides again. Now we're going to check for strength in the lower extremities. And we'll start with hip flexion. Hip flexion is innervated by the L2 and L3 dermatomes, and it's femoral nerve innervated. So what I'll have you do for this is simply bring your knee up towards your chest and then hold Hold your knee and your hip into flexion like this, and don't let me pull your leg back down, okay? Hold it up strong, and don't let me pull down. Good. And then we'll have you switch sides, and we'll compare to the opposite side. Hold it up strong, and don't let me pull back down. Good. You can relax. The next one we'll check is knee extension. So for knee extension, what I'm going to have you do is hold your leg out straight, and then don't let me bend your knee down. And this is an L3-4, and again, femoral innervated nerve. 
So hold your legs straight and don't let me push back down. And then on this side, hold it straight. Good, relax. Next we'll check for dorsiflexion. And dorsiflexion is more an L4-5 and deep perineal innervated function. So what I'll have you do is cock your feet up towards your chin, hold them up there, and don't let me push them back down. And then again on this side. Good, and he's nice and solid. And then finally we'll check for plantar flexion. Plantar flexion is an S1 and tibial nerve innervated function. So we'll have you now push your foot down as if you're stepping on the gas, and don't let me pull it back up. And then on this side. Good. We're going to also look at a lower extremity examination in the sitting position. Depending on the environment that you're in, it may be easier or harder uh, to have the patient in a sitting or lying position to do this examination. I think clearly the tone is best assessed when somebody is lying down, but the power and the strength testing can be done in the sitting position as well. So we'll start with hip flexion. And with hip flexion again, this time you're going to be marching this knee up towards your chest one at a time, and you can use your hands to brace onto the bed. March this knee up, hold it up there, and then don't let me push down. Okay. This is an L2-3 innervated muscle, and again, with the femoral nerve. So hold it up strong and don't let me push down. Good, and we'll have you do it on this side. Hold it up strong and don't let me push down. Good, and you can relax. Next we'll move to knee extension. Now with knee extension, what I, what I don't want to see is having somebody hold their legs out here and the examiner just kind of pushing down at both legs at the same time. What you really need to be doing is isolating one muscle at a time and again trying to assess for a subtle weakness on one side versus the other. So we'll have you kick your leg out straight. This again is an L3-4 and femoral nerve innervated function. And now don't let me bend your knee back down. Good, and we'll have you do it on this side. Good, and relax. Now for dorsiflexion, this is an L4-5 innervated muscle uh, and deep perineal nerve. So I'll have you cock your ankle up in that direction, hold your foot up, and don't let me push it back down. Again, if you try to isolate the muscle by grabbing around the heel and then pushing down on the top of the foot, that seems to work best. Good, and relax. And then finally for plantar flexion, it'll be the same, stepping down on the gas. This is an S1 and tibial nerve innervated function, and don't let me pull your foot back up. Good, and we'll compare it to over here. Good, and you can relax.